the Body Island Lighthouse, with its alternating horizontal black and white stripes, one of five such beacons strung like a brilliant necklace along our state's outer banks. Between its slightly larger and better known neighbor to the south at Cape Hatteras, and its architectural near twin, the Kuratuk Beach Lighthouse, to the north at Kerala. The first lighthouse constructed between Nags Head and Oregon Inlet in 1848 was so poorly made that before long it began sinking to one side and was quickly abandoned. Its replacement, also called the Body Island Lighthouse, was constructed in 1859 and had a more robust building budget. That lighthouse was blown up by retreating Confederate soldiers in 1861 to keep it from falling into the hands of Union forces, which could have used it as a navigation aid or lookout tower. The new 1872 Body Island Lighthouse was built to last, and it has, although by the time the 21st century rolled around, wind and water pretty much had had their way with the 165-foot tall structure, and it was all but worn out. Here's a good example of some of the old cracked stair treads. In fact, by the time the National Park Service began restoration of the landmark in September of 2009, when the light went dark, the lighthouse was in precarious condition. And as it turned out, a new dawn for the old structure was years away. My husband and I came down to visit Body Island and we were just very discouraged at the shape that it was in. Uh, the, it needed painting, the storm panes were broken in the lantern room up above, um, and there were no plans to transfer it from the U.S. Coast Guard to the National Park Service. We found it hard to believe that here it is in the heart of the National Park, and yet the Coast Guard still owned it. And at that time, Coast Guard had no money, no staff to take care of it. It was a pipe dream to get it restored. But we set out on a journey. We were determined to see that it got the attention that it deserves and the funding that it deserves. And it took a long time, 18 and a half years. Here, in a building that's been under nature's assault for well more than a century, issues that may seem relatively minor, like peeling paint on interior walls, offered clues to a deeper dilemma deterioration at the heart of the structure, most ominously where the brick tower and the load-bearing belt course come together. The cast iron drum itself was cracked, along with some of the 16 brackets encircling it, and huge chunks of the exterior had already fallen away, some large enough to have endangered anyone walking below. Immediate action was required, beyond the temporary repairs already made. Okay, what you see here is pretty much uh, the cable that's actually holding this uh, uh, lighthouse together. I mean, you can see up here some of the balcony. It's just barely hanging on now, so yeah. So in 2009, renovations began. The first order Fresnel lens was removed. a skeleton-like scaffolding was erected. Fixtures around the lighthouse gallery were repaired or replaced. The masonry was fixed. Even the lead paint was removed. The business end of the lighthouse got new brass soffits to replace the plugged up cast iron ones under the gallery so the lighthouse can breathe again. And 21 worn through or cracked stair steps were melted down and recast into new ones in Florida before being restored to their places on the spiral staircase. A very green feature for a lighthouse that should remain in service for, oh, say another 137 more years before Mother Nature wins out once again and the structure requires major attention. But the deeper the engineers went, the more damage they discovered. We have the belt course, which is the bottom level of cast iron uh, that everything else sits upon. There's serious 
cracking in every section, and there's 16 sections of everything around this whole structure, 16 brackets, 16 belt sections, 16 uh, sections on the walkway, and each one of the 16 sections of the belt course, which is what this is right here, has the same cracking pattern, which starts from one side, goes up, and comes back down to the other side. Here's another example, the next one over, same exact crack so sort of situation. After a goodly amount of discussion, it was agreed that the modifications necessary to restore the lighthouse to not like new, but better than new, would require more time and money. The expensive scaffolding would have to come down, and the Body Island Lighthouse would have to remain dark for who knows how long. Well, I think the biggest thing was that we actually have to shut down. I mean, dismantle everything, the scaffolding, um, and then actually turn around and wait almost a good year before we could actually get back onto this operation again. March 2012. Congress approves additional funding for the restoration project. The scaffolding goes back up and work begins again. But the National Park Service and the cadre of engineers have to make one concession to their goal of maintaining the historic fabric of the lighthouse. The lighthouse structure was designed to support one person or so, a keeper and his assistant, not thousands of visitors. The Park Service made a promise that we would open up this lighthouse to the public and, uh, and that's where we decided to uh, do the full restoration. A year passes. With the internal problems solved, workers get busy on the exterior. Windows are replaced, and painters bring the faded lighthouse back to black and white life. It's now March 2013, and the lens is returned, with the same backbreaking labor and extensive rigging as before. Only this time, the crates and their precious cargo are going up. They took Cape Lookout, they took that lens out long ago and took it up to Portsmouth and stored it. Never will get it back. So we didn't want that to happen with Body Island. You all ready? Ready when you are. Are we ready? Everybody cool. Let's go. Ready? Larger pieces of glass in the lens weigh close to 300 pounds. Show me strap. Strap. All right, go ahead. Take a load. The lens in the Body Island Lighthouse is a first order Fresnel lens, named after French physicist and engineer. Jean Augustine Fresnel, who built his first lens back in 1823. A first order lens is the largest of the Fresnel lens family, and its 344 prisms can capture a small amount of light, magnify it, and project it 19 miles out to sea. Cleaned and polished, the new old lens is magnificent. It only needs one thing to fulfill its mission a beam of light. April 18th, 2013. The lighting ceremony for the Body Island Lighthouse is just minutes away. And on this day, which the lighthouse has awaited for so long, the descendants of its early keepers will restart the lamp. Five, four, three, two, one. Put the button! Yay! Nice! Nice! Okay, you did it. It's on. The Body Island Light stands present and accounted for once again. Its beacon a welcome sight to the mariners who have missed the light's comforting presence. And a welcome sight to lovers of lighthouses too, who now can marvel at its craftsmanship.
climb the 10 twisting flights of stairs to the public walkway and gaze out to sea from an historic structure that has been lovingly restored at last.